Hey everyone, and welcome back to Flutter from Scratch. In this episode, we're going to have a look at how we can write tests with Flutter. We'll start by writing some unit tests for our Sonder application. In doing so, we'll cover how to set the tests up and how to expect a result. Then, we'll look at how we can mock dependencies in our test environment. And finally, we'll look at the two other types of testing that Flutter has to offer, which is widget and integration testing. And that brings us to our first type of tests, which is unit tests. But how do we know what we should unit test? For this example, let's imagine that we're making an app for our phone to show recipes from an online source. The app starts, greets the user based on whether it's morning or afternoon, and then displays a list of recipes from a remote source. The user can tap on the image of a recipe, and doing so would favourite that particular recipe. There are two things on this page that are good contenders for unit tests. The first is that the text up the top changes depending on whether it's morning or afternoon. We can easily write a unit test to make sure that the right word appears depending on whether it is morning or afternoon. The second one is that we can check that favoriting a recipe has the intended consequence, that is, it's added to the user's local database for future review. Both of these tests are good fits for unit tests, as they don't require to be rendered to the screen to be tested, and they don't need the widget tree. They should also run quite quickly. But they also provide limited certainty around the correct functionality of the app. Fortunately, we can gain that certainty with other types of tests, which we'll cover a bit later. In this video, we'll be writing some tests for our Sonda test app. So I've gone ahead and I've added the similar functionality for this app. That is, when it launches, it'll say afternoon or morning Sonda, depending on time of day. I've also added functionality to be able to add pictures to a list of favourites. They can also be removed later if the user chooses to. The user can also click next to move to the next picture, and then double tap on that image to add it to their list of favourites. After doing so, the favourite image will appear in their list of favourites, and they can also remove them here if they so choose to as well. So let's have a look at a unit test for the functionality that shows morning or afternoon depending on the time of day. I've split each test out into its own little file underneath the test folder, and in this case we'll look in the time service test. If you're new to testing, or new to testing in Flutter, this might look fairly busy but we'll have a look at it line by line. So every test normally has a void main function, which is just like a normal entry point for any Dart app. The first thing we do is we set up a variable for our time service to use. Now, in this case, this is the real service that I use in my app itself. The reason for that is because if we control click into this time service, we can see that this class has one function, which is to say whether it's morning or afternoon. It just takes a number, which is the hour of the day, and depending on what that is, it either returns afternoon, if it's greater than or equal to 12, or if it's not, in any other case, it'll just return morning. So coming back into that unit test, we can see that the first thing we do is we set up that service, which is as simple as assigning that variable the value of the time service object. After that, we set up our first group for these tests. In here, in this callback for the group function, we have our first test. And then we have just a description of what the test is supposed to do. And then we have our test case. So we are just calling that, that function and we're calling it with the number 11 and we're expecting that the result would be morning. And then we have the result, which is here. If it's the same, then the test has passed. And if it's not, then the test has failed. The next test down t tests the opposite condition, which is if the number's more than 12, then we say it's in the afternoon. And the same thing again, but this time we're passing 15, so 3 p.m. And again, expecting a certain result. So. Now, if I were to run this test by using the command flutter 
test and then find the dart file then Flutter would run those tests. If you clone the project, you should be able to do the same. And then congratulations, you've run your first Flutter unit test. So now let's look at a test where we have to mock our dependencies. A good example of this is the favorites unit test, which we'll go into now and have a look. So in here, we can see that we're using the favorite service. But if I go ahead and command click on that, I can see that that's actually an abstract class. So this is all the functionality that implementing services or implementing classes must override. Coming down a bit, we can see this is the service that actually runs on the user's phone or on their device. We have the real favorite service and that implements the I favorite service. And in here, it has all the functions that actually run on the user's device, like setting up a local database, adding it to that database, removing it from the database, and also getting all the favorites back from that database. Well, that's all good, but in a test environment, we may not have access to a database, or the features that we depend on may not be available within that test environment. So we need to fake this functionality for our tests to run, and I'll show you how we do that. Coming back to that favorites unit test, we can see that because this iFavorite service is an abstract class and our setup function, we actually stand up a mocked favorite service. If I command click into that, we can see here that this class as well implements the iFavorite service, but it doesn't rely on a local database on the device. No, instead, it just has an in memory list of strings. All these calls. While they are the same, they implement the abstract class completely, they just add or remove from that list of string. So this test will work in our test environment because it doesn't have any third party dependencies. So coming back into our unit tests for the favorite service, we can see these tests are pretty straightforward. The first one just makes sure that it initializes the list of favorites that is to a length of zero. So there's no saved favorites when the app first starts. And then we add favorites to that list in the next test. And then we expect that the list of favorites should be three. And then our final test is that we do the same thing again. We add in those three favorites, but then we remove one. And then we check that the new length is correct, that it's now two. And that's really testing in a pretty small nutshell. We set up a test case, run our steps, and then check that the result is what we expect it to be. Flutter also provides the ability for you to run widget tests. In the test project, they're in the widget test file. And in here, we can see it's pretty much the same thing. We set up our test, run some code, and then expect a certain outcome. Because we're using the block pattern, we're using the block test library to work through this. Finally, we also have integration testing which is in the test driver folder in the main test file. If we go into here, again, we see it's pretty much the same thing. We have our tests, and then we instruct the Flutter driver what buttons to tap on, and then what we expect to see as a result of our tests. If you want something you can test out locally, try adding an evening case to the Sonda launch screen, and then try and write a test for that as well. Thanks for joining me on episode 4 of Flutter from Scratch. Next time, we'll connect our app into a CI CD provider. We look forward to seeing you then.